Hi, this is Steve with Touch of the Master's Hand, Holy Spirit Ministries. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about, you know, just some things Jesus has been telling me to do. Um, kind of following the leading of the Holy Ghost, too. Um, I'm going to share with you a scripture, and just kind of, this is kind of like part three uh, of, I guess, a series. I really don't know if a series, but anyhow. Um, Isaiah 55. There's been, I mean, I have dreams, and it's been highlighting quite a few scriptures, but Isaiah 55, but really it was along the lines of, a couple months ago, he told me to write a book about Christ and you, the hope of glory. Sorry, I shouldn't have got so far with my computer. Uh, so, and how were his glory? How Jesus was his glory, and when we become sons, when we let Jesus in our heart, accept him Christ our personal Savior, and become his sons, we become his glory. So anyhow, there's all of Isaiah 55 is great, but I really want to highlight this one scripture, um, and then I'm going to just tell you a little bit of just stuff that's going on. Sorry, I was running the cleanup program while I was doing this. Um, so, here it is. Because the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for He has glorified you. And, okay, let me go, go up a little bit farther. Surely you shall call a, a nation you do not know, and nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for He has glorified you. Time for us to shine, guys. Be His glory. We all, you know, we all have a part in this. We're all vessels. We're all created equal. Just read Matthew seven twenty. Not even necessarily created equal. We're all promised the same thing. It's just, you know, the world and the religious culture has got this kind of all twisted up. Higher than positions, monetary. We put emphasis on monetary and um, just things. Attendance, how many people come, sizes of the bands, lights, cameras, just stuff. But God's got a purpose for all of us. So anyhow, we're His glory. The church is His glory. Those that are listening. So that's kind of where this is at. You know, what's Jesus telling you to do? You know, one of the other messages I got on here is, who's your source? Go straight to your source. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. So, um, some of the things he's been telling me to do is he's been giving me a lot of, I feel a little overwhelmed because in my prayers kind of like, God, a little help here. Um, but he's been giving me dreams of cities and different places to go to and people to minister to and different things. And he's been giving me dreams about scriptures and this book. And it's kind of like, man, God, I'm just, a lot going on here, Jesus, you know. It's okay. So, but I'm just going to go with the obedience piece and do it. But we've been on trips, several trips. Some of them were close. Italy, Texas, I live in Dallas. But some of them were far away. Little towns in Pennsylvania. We were on the road for 14 days. We stayed in some places for three or four days, but, you know, we I mean, it's a lot of driving, thousands of miles, thousands of dollars in hotel bills and gas, and we intersected with over, you know, at least a dozen plus people that God had us intersect with, and some awesome stories and testimonies, and I may share some of them, you know, a little bit, um, I'm not going to give too many specifics because I don't really want to embarrass some of these people if they don't want to be, you know, on YouTube. But, so, it's just been awesome. The things that he's been doing and the doors that he's been opening and that, you know, he'll give me a specific person to target and it'll happen. Well, a couple days ago, or well, no, before this last trip, um, one of the cities he highlighted, and he said Lawrence. And I was like, Lawrence what? So I'm kind of planning this trip up to Pennsylvania and through Tennessee and Connecticut. I mean, and up to Connecticut and Kentucky and you know, North Carolina. And I was like, man, God, that's just too many places to go to. And that's why I was saying, a little bit of help here, God. It would be great. But so I was like, he said Lawrence. And I was like, Lawrence what? So 
I look it up. I start looking up different cities. Lawrence, Massachusetts comes up. So I Google it. It's in the general vicinity of where he's leading us to, you know, up towards Pennsylvania. It's a little bit farther out, but it's up there kind of. And so it's like, okay, God, I'm going to put this city down. And it's 10 o'clock in the morning. It's about a month ago. And he's highlighted the city of Lawrence, Massachusetts. Well, watching the news that night at 8 o'clock, and at 4 something in the afternoon, over 60 homes, it's on the news, I'm sure some of y'all have heard it, burst into flames. Killed one, at least one person that I can remember, I don't remember how, how many, what tragic. Um, and it was like, wow, God, you know, one of the cities you highlighted. So I tell my wife the story about it, how, you know, we're going to these different cities and God highlighted the city, and then this happened, it's like, wow, you know. And she's like, did you pray for the city? I'm like, not really, you know, I just I thought of the city that God hollered at. I kind of missed it, you know? So I was like, okay, God, so now some of the stuff that I'm getting, I'm like, maybe I'm just supposed to pray for these places, um, not just go to them. So it's kind of like the pieces are starting to fit together, but I'm also going to them too, and he's doing some awesome things and touching people's lives in intersecting miraculous ways that I know. Oh God. So, that's one of them. So then last night, I had an, or two days ago, I had another dream. And I had one last night too. I'm going to share this one with you too. But, of another city. But, in this dream, I saw a U.S. Navy ship. And it was called the Lawrence. And it, became involved in something, I don't know what. It wasn't real clear. But it was something that needed prayer. So I'm just throwing it out there, pray for the people. I kind of Googled it a little bit, uh, see where that ship was or where it's been deployed. It just recently came back from over there somewhere in the South China Sea, a lot of disputed territory that the Chinese say is theirs and the Vietnamese say is theirs and it's kind of just kind of a messy situation. Um, but that ship was highlighted, so please pray for those sailors on that ship. The sh you know, I'm not so concerned about the ship itself, because it's just ship, ship stuff, you know, can be replaced. I'm concerned about the lives that are being touched and impacted by it. Maybe the commanding officer, I, I don't know. Just pray for it. But I don't have a cl clarity on it yet, but I know I had that dream, so, I put, so I've been praying for it. Then, last night, I had a dream, and in this dream... The Lord spoke to me and said, Dawson, Dawson City, the city of Dawson. I was like, okay, God, so I started questioning, well, where is it at, God, you know, and didn't really get an answer at first, and then finally I did, and he's like, it's in Georgia, Dawson, Georgia. I'm like, okay. So then he said, and part of Alaska, but it's Dawson Creek, Alaska. I'm like, okay. And then, kind of all started fitting together, so I Google it. There is a Dawson, Georgia. And it's by this town called Dalton, Georgia, that I kind of wanted to visit, because it's been on the internet about this guy that has this Bible that he says has been leaking oil for months. I'm like, man, that's kind of a cool story. I'd like to see it. I, you know, what's going on out there? Just kind of just get a feel for it in the spirit. Um, so I was like, okay, it's not far from there. So I was like, okay, so I'm going to put that on my list of places to go to. And uh, this book of cities that he wants me to visit. Minister to people, whatever. There's some kind of purpose. And it's like, okay, God, I'm just going to do the obedience piece. I'm, you know, it's like, man, here we go again. Here's someplace else to go. Well, he also dealt with me about looking up Dawson, Montana. And I did, and it's a county. I had a dream about Montana about three months ago. And in this dream... There was a revival taking place that was going to sweep across Montana, and it was starting in Bozeman. And there's even more to that story, but that's in my book that I wrote down, part of that journey. So it's like, okay, God, you know, it's kind of like a lot going on, but I'm going to eventually get to it, and maybe it's a timing thing. I've been praying about it. It's like, gives me something to, you know, okay, God, when, how, where, why? 
those are just some things that he's telling me to do. And he's giving me some specifics and some specific people sometimes. Not always, but it's like, okay. Last trip we were on, I went in with this. We are at a gas station and ran into this guy. And he was on his way to his mother to pick up his mother's. His mother had died. It was kind of a sad situation. And it, his mother had died and he had to drive, drive like 1,500 miles. He was in an old broke down looking van. Out of gas. Diabetic. Hadn't eaten. Just rough shape. And it's like, man, God. People are really hurting out there. That's why we need to get out there and portray the glory. I'm not saying we can help everybody. Maybe, maybe not. Sometimes we may, may not be able to help them with money. I did, I did give them some money. Um, but I gave them a lot of prayer. Well, fast forward that to just recently. I was back in Dallas. And same type of situation. I ran into a guy at a gas station. was really physically beat up. His van was beat up. He was beat up. Scars all over him. Really rough. Looked like he, you know, I don't know if he was a smoker, but he looked like he smoked a hundred packs a day. You know, he just had that kind of look. It's rough. I don't care, you know. So I got a chance to minister to him, you know, give him a little gas money, tell him about the love of Jesus, be the glory, you know. So that's what I'm praying, you know. You don't necessarily have to go across the country, across town. It's just where, where God's sending us. But, you know, he may be telling you that too, but what's he telling you to do? You know, just kind of go with the obedience piece and then let the faith build and do what God's telling you to do, you know. Um, he may be highlighting, I'm just going to pick on pastors, he may be highlighting the pastor of your church. Maybe good, maybe bad, but it's an opportunity to pray for them. To see, you know, that they need a lot of covering, they need a lot of prayer, they got a lot on, you know. They're like a got a bullseye on their back from the enemy. So it's so other your brothers and sisters, because we're his glory. If the enemy, if the devil couldn't deal with one Jesus, how's he gonna deal with millions of us? Once Jesus becomes in our heart, once we become sons of his, once we portray that glory. So that's why sometimes things kinda go haywire and awry and seemingly a little help here, God. That's kind of where my prayer's been lately. It's like, man, God, you know, I'm, we need to do these things, but, you know, I've got some loved ones that need salvation. I've got some things that I need in my life changed and arranged and done, you know? So, I don't have a problem going out and doing this stuff, but it's like, man, I could, you know, use some stuff too. There's some things that, you know, but I don't want to be selfish. I don't want to be, you know, he, he, God knows. Some of them have happened. Some miraculous. Th I mean, I just, a lot of miraculous things have happened in my life. A lot of just things that were God. That I, I know were God, were Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost and just awesome things. So I'm not going to discount the rest of it, you know, be just because I might have a need in some area or something. And, you know, he, he's done so many things. It's like, he's going to take care of all of it. I know he is. It's just a timing thing. And maybe it's, you know, whatever. Patience, teaching me things, whatever. You know, I'm just going to kind of just go to the obedience piece and plow right into it and just be. So anyhow, what's God telling you to do? What's Jesus telling you to do? What's the Holy Spirit telling you to do? Lead and guide and direct you, to, you know? Maybe even to just do something special for your wife or your children. Or your neighbor. And they tell you to go buy tires for your neighbor's car. That's the town grump. Doesn't even go to church. That's always got some scowl look on his face. Are you going to do it? You know? It, but it may not be money. It may just be go pray for somebody. Maybe pray for the clerk at 7-Eleven. You know? A lot of these retail places, not just retail, but a lot of these people, I mean, we know what they're making. They're hardly making anything. Nine, ten bucks an hour. You know? Barely making it. Scraping by in a mess and some of them will be older people you know it's like man god so what's he telling you to do break break out of the box break out of the church get up off the pew or seat or whatever it's time for us to go out and shine be his glory wherever it's at however it's at whatever he's telling you to do just do it 
And the other piece of this is directional, but who's your source? Make sure it's God. Make sure it's Jesus. Make sure it's the Holy Spirit. Bounce it off. Check it. Test it. Do what you got to do. But He wants to download things into your life and use every available vessel. It's time for the church to shine and be His glory. So anyhow, thank you. Sorry for a little bit lengthy message. Uh, it's really hard for me not to make them long, but appreciate your listening to them. God bless you. Share them with others. Email me at steveyoungstrom at yahoo.com if you want to. If you've got any comments, please put them on my YouTube channel. Share it with anybody. God bless you. Talk to you soon. Bye.